Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing of the Sony FDA EV-1S. This is an electronic viewfinder designed for the NEX 5N, also compatible with the NEX 5R. So if you own either of those cameras and are looking to bridge the gap, at least with regard to an electronic viewfinder, between the 5 Series and the 6 or 7, this is pretty much the must-have accessory. So for those of you who are on the fence about buying the 5N or 5R, strictly because of the fact that it's missing an electronic viewfinder, this is what you will need to get. Originally, it was priced at $350 retail, which was a very steep price tag at launch. But since launch, it has come down in price significantly. You can now find this for roughly $225. I'll include a link in the description. And really, there's no reason to pick it up at this point if you're tired of framing shots or worried about framing shots on the touchscreen LCD found on the 5N and R. So an important accessory, arguably the most important in the NEX lineup. Do keep in mind this is not compatible with anything other than the 5N and R. Again, it only mentions the 5N, but I can assure you it uses the exact same mount as the R. So no problems on compatibility. I will be testing this with both, both cameras. And for those of you who are specifically interested in this, it really does offer a very different experience than the viewfinders found on both the NEX 6 and 7. And the reason I say that is because even though this is identical in terms of performance, it is an XGA uh, OLED viewfinder, so it's going to give you some of the best performance you're going to get out of a uh, modular electronic viewfinder. Go through the paperwork here. It isn't going to give you the issue of what we'll find on the 6, such as having the uh, actual viewfinder mounted on the far left side. So those of you who are stronger in the left eye aren't going to have to press your face against the screen of the camera. You're going to actually be center mounted with this one. Uh, also, it does have the ability to articulate. So let me just go through the paperwork. Of course, warranty, standard fare, a quick start guide. I didn't even mention to you guys what they were showing here, but essentially they were just showing you what is okay to store, or excuse me, how it's okay to store this product. Essentially, they don't want you putting the camera in any uh, bag with the viewfinder mounted. Obviously, it can be snapped off even though it does screw on. Remember, this is modular. It can break off. So that's also part of the drawback of picking this up. But in my opinion, uh, if you're careful and also if you actually prefer this design, it could be well worth it, especially since it is now less expensive than picking up the 6 or 7, especially if you don't want kit glass, but that's a whole other discussion. So an included pouch, nothing crazy here. This is made in China. Not that that's significant, but I always find it interesting when Sony manufactures parts for a product in different places, and I say that because this viewfinder is made in Japan, which is not surprising at all. So, basically, there is a new version of this, by the way, uh, that isn't identical, but it's manufactured for the RX-1, and it is black. As you may have noticed already, this is silver, so it's going to match a silver version of the 5N or 5R, but if you're using a black version, you'll have to live with the silver, especially at the uh, savings, which again is part of the reason I'm sharing this with you guys. So let's take a tour of this as best we can. On the left side, you can see you've got a button to switch between the uh, finder and the LCD. So that's pretty much standard fare. On the actual viewfinder itself, you've got that built-in uh, sensor, which will essentially notice when you are using or going to use the actual viewfinder. And as a result, it will switch to the electronic viewfinder. This is part of Minolta's technology that Sony acquired and can be found in pretty much every uh, digital SLR from Sony, even cameras like the HX200 and 300V uh, and the 100. So that's certainly unique. Some of you will love that. Some of you will hate it. Uh, you've also got a focus ring. I believe it is, well, I thought it was right there. Or excuse me, let me remove the cap. That's where the rest of the action is here. Uh, that's what was blocking it right there uh, in terms of focusing uh, for your eye. There's essentially the screw-on part that works with the mount. That's why Sony's recommending not to leave this attached because at the end of the day, the point is, is that it is connected to the camera by this uh, adapter right here. And while it may be steady while it's on board, not the best thing uh, to leave on the camera and open up the bag and find it has broken off, maybe damaged the port, forget ruined also this pricey accessory, even at $225. Now, 
What I mentioned before about the NEX6 and the 7 is that both have fantastic viewfinders. However, they are flush on the upper left corner of the camera, which many people, including myself, were not in love with. Uh, it was a very small gripe, so you guys never really heard me complain about it because it never prevented me from using my camera. But this was always a far more attractive option, not only because you can actually remove this from the body when you don't need it, because I think many of you who are interested in an accessory like this already know that there are times that you will not want this and times you'll need it, uh, whether you're in bright light or just trying to frame things more pro uh, in a better fashion than you can actually pull off with a tilting LCD screen, which even on the 5N, you also, you know, it's not as versatile. Granted, that's not going to really change things when it comes to using an electronic viewfinder. But overall, uh, the fact that this can articulate also is going to give you the ability to take shots uh, upwards without having to actually move your head, which is definitely an improvement from a standard electronic viewfinder, as much as I do enjoy them on both the 6 and 7, which obviously are built into camera. Now, there are certainly, as I mentioned before, pros and cons to picking up an accessory like this. The fact that you're going to always have to plug this in, remove it, that'll be off-putting to some of you completely. But for people like me uh, that specifically are stronger in the left eye, it's definitely a more accommodating uh, alternative to the onboard electronic viewfinders found in the 6 and 7. Now, whether or not that would make me actually switch a system, that really comes down to personal preference. But I am going to be testing this out because I do have a 5N and 5R, and I've always wanted to pick one of these up because really, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, this is the difference, in my opinion, for the most part, especially between the 5R and the 6. Granted, there are manual controls at play as well as a change in the actual physical body. But uh, beyond that, the electronic viewfinder is really the most significant thing missing or preventing the 5N or R from being, in my opinion, a digital SLR replacement for most entry-level users. Clearly, uh, amateur, semi-pros, pros, they'll only use cameras like this for B-roll and backup cameras. They're never going to lean on them. I won't say never, but most times will not lean on them. So, again, this is a big difference maker, $225 now and really offers you more versatility and flexibility than the built-in uh, viewfinders on the 6 and 7. But again, the drawback is you're going to have to carry it in its little uh, black pouch. Of course, you don't have to, but that's why Sony included it. And there were enough warnings here, even on the packaging for the viewfinder itself. Again, Sony telling you, please do not put this in a bag with it attached. Because if it breaks, I assume they don't want to deal with warranty claims, and I understand that. because. This is a fairly expensive piece of equipment to manufacture. The reason we've seen a price drop, I would have to assume, has most to do with the fact that it's been you know, manufactured now for over a year, and as a result, it becomes less expensive to make. Uh, other than that, sales also maybe not so good, considering this was $350, and most people, as soon as the NEX7 launched, said, I'm either going 7 or touchscreen and forgetting about the viewfinder. Clearly not everyone, uh, but that was often most uh, most consumers were often put in that position uh, to determine whether or not this accessory really was worth 350 after all the nex 5n launched at uh, 700 dollars the 5r with kit uh, of course i'm speaking kit lens prices here uh, packages the 5r at 750 it went up so if you add an accessory like this you clearly are getting very close, if not stepping into NEX6 pricing territory, and you do get the benefit of a newer kit lens. I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I didn't want to get into kit glass, but in my opinion, you're best off, you know, really investing time and studying this up. I'm going to give you guys an updated review, clearly, because it is an expensive accessory, but it will change the way you use the uh, NEX 5N or R. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.